Welcome to the Nurture Small Business Podcast. I'm your host, Denise Kagan, president of the DCA Virtual Business Support. At DCA, we believe in small businesses and the families they support. Learn more at dcavirtual.com. Welcome to another edition of Nurture Small Business. Today I have with me Ken Babcock. He is a co-founder and the CEO of Tango. Tango is a platform that allows users to create beautiful step-by-step tutorials of any digital process without the performance of video recordings. Now, Ken got to this role through dropping out of Harvard. We're going to talk about that in a minute. And he has two other co-founders, Brian Schultz and Dan Giovaccini. I knew I was going to goof on that one. So welcome to the show today, Ken. Thanks for having me, Denise. So I went to your website. I wanted to, you know, check you out, look at some things, and, and a lot of things stood out for me. But before we get into that, I always like to ask people about how they got to where they're going and something personal. Now, I understand, and I saw this in your bio, that Tango received a lot of venture capital. We did. Yeah, we're, uh, we've actually raised about $20 million to date between our seed and Series A fundraising. That's incredible. What was the most challenging thing about that process? It's a lot of things. I mean, fundraising is is kind of like dating. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a bad analogy, but you know, you, you can never tell really like what the interest on the other side is. They're trying to figure out your interest in them. There's a lot of like dancing around like, well, is, you know, this could be interesting to me if someone else is interested. Um, mm. And so fundraising is kind of this you know, it's it's as much an art as it is a science. Science being you have to come in with metrics, you have to demonstrate that your business is solving a pain point and users are adopting it. But you also have to kind of play this game of like, hey, clock's ticking, like we've got, you know, somebody else who, who wants to invest. Mm. Um, so those dynamics were definitely a little challenging for me. I mean, my my background is in data science and analytics. So I I skew on that like science, highly rational side, like here's the business, like you should invest. Um, whereas like all that gamesmanship on the other end is is challenging. So I'm assuming that one of your other partners has that ability. You know, I mean, we complement each other really well. And I think, yeah, I mean, absolutely. So Dan G. Bikini, uh, <laughs> he was actually an investor at a large firm called General Catalyst beforehand. So some of those subtle nuances of translating what people mean when they say X or, you know, entering the second conversation after the first, and like what our strategy should be. Dan's been invaluable there. So he's had a little bit of experience and a bit of a roadmap to to guide you through that venture capital raising. So I understand you also had a quite impactful personal event occur while you were raising your Series 1. Yeah. So when we were in the middle of our Series A, which was January, my son was born, my first son, Mm -hmm. uh, Quinn, uh, which was, uh, was pretty wild. I had a bunch of meetings stacked up. He arrived about two weeks early. which was a really nice surprise. But, you know, I was trying to move around meetings that had been scheduled. My wife likes to uh, to mention that I actually took I actually took a couple calls from the delivery room. Once all the <laughs> dust was settled, I was like, okay, I think I can maybe just like, you know. Have <laughs> you no, must have an incredible wife is all I'm going to say is because I know a lot yeah. of women would be like, yeah, no. <laughs> Yeah, no, she's she's the best. We met in college and we've been together for over 10 years. And so she knows the ins and outs of, of who I am and what I need to do. So uh, she was very supportive. So so jugg- juggling being supportive during childbirth as well as raising Series A funds. I love it. Definitely had your hands full there. Now, I went to your website. We're definitely going to talk about the technology because I thought it was pretty cool. I went to your website and I'm going to read something that I saw on there. Let me make sure I can get back to where we found it. Oh, okay. Mango. We're serious about not taking ourselves seriously. We work hard, but we also have fun. Unlimited gifting of mango products, regular team events like paint nights, off sites to new cities three times a year. Tell me about that. You've clearly developed a culture that's very specific to your company. Totally. I think 
you know, this this comes actually a lot from my experience at Uber. So I mentioned, you know, data science analytics. That was that was mostly at Uber. I was there for four and a half years. A lot of stuff around Uber's culture is fairly well documented. You know, I always kind of felt like that didn't have to be the way that a high growth company needs to work. Uber was very serious about taking ourselves seriously. So, <laughs> and we, you know, we had values that were, you know, meritocracy and toe stepping, principled confrontation. And so, you know, when you were going into a meeting at Uber, it was often like you were entering battle. You know, you're like, all right, I've got to fight for my viewpoint and someone else is going to fight for theirs and we're going to emerge exhausted and disheveled and but like maybe a decision will be made and that war on a lot of people i mean you know by the time that i left four and a half years in i mean i was i'd gone through burnout at one point had to take a month off like and when i left it was just this like overwhelming sense of relief uh <laughs> that that was not the environment that i needed to be in so you know I, I knew that when i started a company it wouldn't be about that and and it's less about like okay let's let's ratchet down the intensity because i think that that stuff still matters but the culture that we've created is more about let's check our egos at the door there's no bad ideas you know nothing is personal so like everything that we're doing is like trying to be in best service to the customers the ideas that we have are for that you know no one's you know getting a report card at the end of the meeting we just want to do what's what's right by the people that we're building for and so by removing some of that intensity and confrontation and you know grind i think it creates you know more inviting conversations where people can share ideas I believe it's probably also fostered your growth. Would you not agree with that? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Because we're we're constantly listening to not what is our intuition about what we need to build, but instead like our customers and what they need. So developing this very specific culture that is more inclusive, more fun, you've allowed your team to step into their roles and create better customer services. I think that's what I just heard. That's what that's what you heard. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. And and congratulations to you. Now, I saw in your bio also you have 50,000 subscribers. Is that correct? Or is that number higher now? Oh, well, that number is way higher. Well, not way higher, but we have 150,000 now. So oh, that is way higher. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's funny when I write up these bios, you know, it's hard to anticipate where we'll be when we record this, but our product has grown, you know, tremendously over the past year. I mean, we launched probably 11 months ago, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we're at 150,000 users, which again, is just a testament to what the team has been able to do. Most of that has been through word of mouth, people finding the product organically and sharing it with other members of their team. Um, we've spent very little on marketing, so we feel really lucky. So that's incredible. Mostly through word of mouth with that type of growth. That's, you know, my company has grown through word of mouth, but certainly hasn't grown that way. <laughs> It has been very much uh, sequentially versus exponentially. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've, you know, I think we've seen a lot of traction on different so social media platforms and, and not necessarily stuff that we're putting out, but stuff that our users are putting out. So uh, uh, completely unprompted, you know, users will post about us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and just talk about like, holy cow, I found this tool. You all need to know about it. Uh, and that's been, that's been really powerful for us. Yes. Actually, I had heard about your product before I was, you know, contacted to interview you. Um, and I promise you, we are going to get to that technology piece as well, because what you guys do, I'm a huge proponent of systems, putting systems in place, documenting what you do. That's really how you make an organization grow. Uh, yeah. And your product does that really quite simply. Yeah, simplicity is like one of our core principles, you know, the, in, in building the product and messaging. And it all kind of stems from, you know, knowing that a lot of the dynamics in the workplace are changing in terms of mm. how long people are staying at companies, also the technology that they're leveraging within those companies. I mean, all that stuff is changing. People are staying, you know, less. Um, I think at one point when I was at Uber, the average tenure for a software engineer was like 1.2 years. And so oh, wow. when you talk about, you know, someone coming in, making an impact and then departing, you know, hopefully there's a paper trail behind that. And that's where documentation is so important. 
Absolutely. Um, I, I know for from my years at Coca-Cola many years ago, you know, that was one of the things I was in charge of was like paper documentation of actual procedures, writing them. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, I'm a firm believer of that. So your time at Uber and understanding this, you know, software engineer turnover status, is that what created this idea or what did spark the idea between the three of you? It was kind of a combination of the three of our experiences. But, um, you know, for me, what allowed me to see what this, you know, could be and, and probably help a little bit in some of that development was, was the experience at Uber because we had tremendous turnover, but we also had tremendous growth. I mean, when I joined, Uber was still a big company, 800 people. Within a year, we were 5,000 people. And by the time that I left three years later, it was 25,000 people. And so when you talk about how documentation can up-level an organization, it's also about onboarding. So mm -hmm. people in, they have to know what they need to do to execute their job really well. And, and when you're growing at that rate, documentation needs to be the foundation. And Uber was actually excellent at it. It was only my second job. So I didn't I didn't recognize that what I was getting was a sort of best in class education and what great documentation is, but we playbooked everything. And the first team that I was on was actually tasked with uh, maintaining, updating, validating the playbook for all of our launches. So, you know, Uber's model was kind of go into a city, open an office, hire people locally, they'd all be brand new, but then hand over this playbook that was incredibly thorough. And that's how we would start in a market. But obviously things change, best practices change, the playbook changed. And so I was on the team that was basically saying, hey, here's the here's the most updated version of that playbook. And that's, you know, that's honestly what allowed Uber to scale in the way that it did. I mean, it's still today, you know, one of the greatest growth stories of all time. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, I believe Autobell scaled largely the same way. They made a highly replicatable system and trained everybody exactly the same way. So it yeah. can be done for a business that's not specifically tech related. And right. I know for small businesses like mine, you know, you bring in people, maybe you hire only a couple people a year, but if you, that position rolls in three years, if you don't have it documented what you did, then you have to figure it out all over again or search for, oh, what did I do? Where were those, where was that paperwork and all that sort of stuff. So having those systems in pr place, I can speak to it is extraordinarily helpful. Yeah. I think for small businesses too, I mean, the, the impact is almost more concentrated because when you're hiring somebody, you want that person to give you some leverage where it's like, okay, I have this person who can go take these tasks. And I don't have to worry about it. And I can focus on, you know, what I need to focus on. But if you're bringing someone in and it becomes, okay, well, now I have somebody that I need to oversee constantly and, and make sure that they're doing things the right way. You know, that's a productivity drain too. So I think documentation also helps you when you do hire that person, make sure that it's, you know, one plus one is two, not one plus one is like one and a half, right? Absolutely. So we talked about, you know, how you came up with the idea. And now I kind of want to get into a little bit of nitty gritty of how exactly does Tango work? You know, when mm -hmm. I introduced you, we said something about it takes the performance art out of video. And I asked you beforehand, I was like, what does that mean exactly? So if you could explain that also. Yeah, I guess what I'll, you know, what I'll start by saying is what we noticed. So we started the company in 2020. And um, obviously, we were in the midst of a pandemic and companies were going remote, distributed. What we were seeing was a lot of people were using screen recording. Um, there's tools like Loom, Screencastify. Obviously, Zoom recordings, we're on Zoom right now. And that's how people were sort of disseminating knowledge within their teams now that they were distributed and remote. But there's a lot of issues with video recording that we saw. It works for certain use cases, but you know, for the person who's creating that screen recording, that performance art is really... Okay, I got to make sure I know what I'm going to say. I mean, I don't want to me mess up or else I'm going to have to start over again. If I'm clicking around on my screen, like I don't want to mess up there either. And then, oh man, I really hate the sound of my own voice. So so there's there's all these elements that kind of come into the creator side of, of screen recording. But then on the viewer side, like Denise, if I was to send you something, you're following at my speed, not your own speed. So you have to slow things down, rewind, pause. And sometimes maybe you only need like a little snippet, like a little nugget of knowledge. You don't need the whole process. And so it becomes really hard in video to find like, okay, where's that point where I need, you know, the knowledge that I need. And so we took a step back from that and basically said, okay, well, what if we could do something where 
you know, we remove some of that performance art, allow people to kind of edit what they've done pretty seamlessly. And, you know, let's, again, coming back to that simplicity principle, let's just make things a step-by-step -step tutorial with screenshots and descriptions and URLs. That way, you know, on the other side, people can follow along at their own pace. They can jump ahead to the steps that they need to know. And so what we're doing, uh, which which has been pretty powerful, is we're, we're effectively allowing people to do that, but do it passively. So if you have your processes that, you know, make your business run and you want to share that with other people on your team so that they can replicate it. We just allow you to go through your process and we create the documentation in the background. So gone are the days of carving out 60 to 90 minutes to write up an article, um, edit that article, you know, make sure it's up to date, send it out to the team. Once it's, you know, once it does become out of date, you know, people are pinging you, oh man, like this is broken. I can't use this anymore. And so we're trying to like eradicate all of that by saying, okay, well, let's, let's make it a lot more frictionless. Let's save you some time creating documentation. And we do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. So every action that you take in your process that triggers a screenshot from Tango. And then the output is, you know, a step-by-step -step tutorial describing exactly what you did, a screenshot, a URL, of the page that you're on and, you know, start and end points. And so it's an opt-in experience. I think when a lot of people hear that, they ask, oh man, is that like, is that like Big Brother? Are they just, <laughs> are you watching? <laughs> Um, it's not that at all. And we've intentionally built it not to be that. So we're a browser extension. You basically click the extension to get started. You know, when you know you're about to jump into something and then you click it again to, to end it, it's pretty simple. And we're compatible with a lot of different wikis and, uh, you know, just different like documentation systems. So if you want to take that tango that you created, you can copy and paste it wherever you need it to be. Okay. You, you just answered several of the questions I was going to ask you. I was like, wait, it takes screenshots. How does it know to take screenshots? So yeah. it's, it's a, it's a plugin or not a plugin, a, a widget. Uh, yep. Yeah. What did you just call that? Browser, browser extension. Browser extension. Yep. <laughs> My brain's going in 90 different directions. So it's a browser extension. Use it sort of like a timer, click on, click off. Yep. Okay. And then how does it deliver that tango to you? Yeah. So once you're done, once you click off, we'll open a new tab and then it'll go to your, your Tango account and you'll have what we call, you know, a step-by-step -step workflow um, of everything that you just did. And it's processed in five seconds. So that's, what's been pretty powerful is like, you know, that five seconds to create that piece of documentation that usually took you 60 minutes to, you know, 90 minutes. You know, we're saving people a lot of time doing that. And users can download this out of their account. So say they want to put it in a SharePoint or whatever, where the team needs it. Yeah. So we have a few different ways to share and export. You can download to a PDF. You can share with someone directly on the Tango platform. Uh, and then we also have an embed feature where you can you know, embed the workflow dynamically into a page, or you can just simply copy. We have a feature called a magic copy where it just copies all the elements of the workflow. You can put it in a Word doc, you can put it in SharePoint, you can put it in Google Docs, uh, whatever it is you use. And so the idea there is really like, we know people have existing systems. We're not trying to create this behavior change where now you've got to use this new system. We want it to just be compatible with what you're already using. Yeah, I think most of my team members would buck at a new system, but I <laughs> think they would be really intrigued and appreciate you know, a step-by-step -step with screenshots because yes, otherwise we have to create that manually. And it is an incredible amount of time to create those yeah. and then edit and then pass it through the team. And I know on your website, it talks a lot about that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, if you think about each of the components of what we're doing, mm -hmm. it's not that it's so like hard to do it the old way. I mean, it, you know, lots of folks can take screenshots and annotate them, but it's extremely cumbersome and time consuming. You know, if you think about taking that screenshot, maybe it gets saved to your desktop or saved to a folder, then you got to open it, you got to crop it. And then maybe you're adding arrows or, you know, different annotation. We allow you to do that all in one place. And we even give you the ability to like blur out sensitive information. Um, oh, that's nice. Which, yeah, which is great for, you know, customer support teams that are dealing with a lot of like PII. And then, you know, we're pulling the URLs in as well. Those are things you'd probably try to copy to the clipboard. And, you know, on, on every page, we're also reading like the HTML and CSS to come up with accurate descriptions. So when you do one of those actions that triggers a screenshot, we also know, you know, what button you clicked because um, 
you know, that button <laughs> and say, hey, you clicked on you know, this calendar <laughs> event with Denise. You so. know, it's funny. There's I've had people who've wanted us to transcribe, you know, their videos and they always say, and click here. I was like, no, you have to say and click this button located here because the only way we can transcribe it accurately without literally stopping and rewinding and looking to see where you have clicked is yeah. <laughs> is by you describing where it is. So that's done for you. All done for you. How nice. Okay. What else would you like to tell me about the software? Give me a, <laughs> give me a success story, maybe. Yeah, so many things. Yeah, I mean, I think what's cool is we're seeing lots of different teams and companies using this. I mean, documentation is something that's pervasive across job function, role, industry. I mean, everyone, everyone is doing it. So we have, we have companies and these are on our website, but you know, we have everything from Keller Williams, which is, you know, a large real estate company mm -hmm. to Netflix. I think that, you know, the common thread in our user base is it is a lot of folks who are, their jobs are very operational in, in nature. It's customer support, customer success, sales enablement, where, you know, there is this focus on process, consistency, and efficiency. And so, you know, with customer support and success, one interesting dynamic there is, um, you know, we've, we've largely built Tango to be something for internal knowledge and in exchange of, uh, you know, hey, this is the process that we run, hand it off to your teammate. But these support and success teams are actually also using it for external use cases. When a customer writes in or a customer needs help, they'll actually use Tango to show them exactly what to do. So ah. not the, it's not the foremost thing that we've built for, but having that additional use case has just you know furthered the engagement from those teams on Tango, which is really, really awesome to see. Yeah, I can totally see that actually. We, we've had a client in the past who you know, wanted us to do something a certain way. We kept telling her it's not working. We literally had to do a video to show her this is not working and this is why. So your product would have done that. Yeah. So we see that that's kind of the ad hoc, like responding to a customer. We've also seen lots of companies actually, you know, populate their help center using Tango. So it's actually funny. We were talking to, uh, forget what the product was for, but we were talking to a company where we were actually considering using their product and our CTO had a, had a question for them. Um, just around how to how to navigate within the product. They sent us a help center article and it was created with Tango. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't, they didn't really put two and two together, but that was a pretty awesome moment. Oh, yes, that is. I love it. It's incredible. Oh, my goodness. Okay. If people want to reach out to you after the show, how can they find you? Yeah, feel free to reach out to, uh, it's, it's pretty simple, ken at tango.us. Tango is T-A-N-G-O. And tango.us is our, is our website as well. So if you want to learn more about the product, it's also free to download. We have paid versions, obviously, but you can get started for free. You know, that's how most users get going. Okay. And we'll make sure that that's in the show notes. It's tango.us and Ken at tango.us. You got it. Thank you for joining me for today's Nurture Small Business podcast, where the focus is on business growth, technology, and people strategies to help your business thrive. At DCA Virtual Business Support, our focus is making your business operations run smooth so you can focus on growth. Reach out to me at denise at dcavirtual.com if you'd like to learn more.